Good evening to all uh, present here in for the webinar. On behalf of ENVIS, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, we welcome you to the webinar for life, lifestyle for environment. Uh, India is serving as the uh, energy behind the decisive climate action on the world stage. At the 2021 UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, announced Mission Life to bring about the individual behavior changes for the global climate change action. Mission Life is to solve the ch challenges faced by the planet using human-centric and collective efforts and robot action that further the sustainable development. Life envisions replacing the prevalent use and dispose economy with the circular economy. The circular economy has been an integral part of India and our culture and our lifestyle for many generations. The mission intends to nudge the individuals to undertake simple acts in their daily lives that can contribute significantly to climate change. When it is embraced across the world, it becomes a world mission itself. As a part of life, we have with us Dr. Harish Hande today. Dr. Hande will speak about the science of social change through energy assess. Dr. Hande is the founder of CEO and Selco Foundation, is recognized as a pioneer of rural energy services across the globe. He is a co-founder of Selco Solar Light Private Limited and is presently the CEO of Selco Foundation. Dr. Hari successfully demonstrated a decentralized energy solutions, particularly that can be powered by solar and can be sustainable also. In his pioneering efforts, Dr. Hande has received many national and international outstanding awards. Ashton Awards of 25 and 27, Karnataka Rajya Sava Prasasti Award of 2011, Said for Said Future Energy Prize of 2018, Scroll Social Entrepreneurship Award of 2018, and apart from that, the Asia's prestigious uh, Raman Magsasi Award of 2011 also was presented to him. For his consistent efforts to put solar power technology in the hands of the poor through his social entrepreneurship called Selco Foundation. Apart from this, Dr. Hande's social entrepreneurship has taken up as case studies across Management Institute of India. We welcome you, sir, and we invite Dr. Hande for the session. We hand over the sessions to you, sir. To you, sir, Hande, please. Dr. Hande. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for that. Uh, um, I would say generous uh, introduction, which I uh, I would say is uh, uh, first of all, it's an honor and privilege to speak here, and to all the guests who have made time at the, in the evening, uh, seven o'clock. Um, so I was thinking, what do I speak today? Because, ma'am, as I was saying, that the 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 privilege in which many of us grow is um, I went to IIT Kharagpur because three hundred million Indians did not write the exam. Um, and if they had written the exam, I would not have gone into IIT. Uh, so, and uh, why do I get some awards? Because I speak English. Uh, Non-English speakers in our country have no chance. So the issue is, it's about the non-inclusivity in our thought process um, uh, that, that leads to the way we have defined the society in a non-holistic manner. And the question is not only looking at what, what can we do in very simple ways, but can we do those simple ways in a very inclusive manner? And, and that is where I think, where we, we as citizens of this country, a city, panchayat or everything, we have much more responsibility that we need to take hold of in a country like ours, rather than waiting for somebody else or our favorite pastime of actually always criticizing the government and the question is what is our role per se i mean and and government is nobody but ourselves in many ways and the trash we throw out is we have thrown the trash but we blame the government for not cleaning up of what we threw is imagine at a home and a saying that boss if, if a child throws trash in his bedroom or her bedroom and and or, or kitchen do we actually, the child has the right to blame the parents for not cleaning it up? I mean, if that's the same logic, if you're, if you're looking, oh, that my maid servant will come and clean it up, right? I think somewhere we need to take much more responsibility because as 
we've been talking about climate and the climate has been uh, what you call it as um, is something that has been happening for last 15 20 years and we are and we are suddenly waking up and actually not doing much about it and we are expecting somebody else to do and and people who are suffering the most we in the middle class our middle class will get away by having solutions either we move to a different city for better livelihoods different country in many ways but where would the poor go the the flooding of their houses in the slum areas of bangalore or delhi or mumbai or chennai the complete destruction of agricultural crops because the monsoons don't come in time, the heat stress. You know, in Delhi last time, more people died inside the house rather than outside the house. Hello? Sir, please continue. We yeah, sir. Disturb. Yeah, so so the question is, how do we how do we make sure that the poor who are in the in like last year, 30% of chicks in, in terms of the poultry sector were lost for the farmers in uh, in Jharkhand because of heat stress. It's a so for many of us, the problem is not on our doorstep uh, for for the middle class. For many of the poor, it's actually inside the house. It's inside, it's destroying incomes, it's destroying livelihoods, it's destroying the generation of poor that is going to come up. How can we come up with solutions that are inclusive? And, and same, some of the challenges that I put, put forward for to many of these middle class, as well as the institutes like the Indian Science, the IITs, are that where are the futuristic innovations that are we bringing right to the table that can be actually put into practice by the farmers who own less than two acres of land, by the Panipuri vendor that's on the streets of Bangalore or Chennai or Madras, or as blacksmith blower who works day in and day out in, in say Udupi or in Kanpur, we are not innovating anything for the poor. So I question the relevance of many of these institutes. And it's all us in many ways. The responsibility is not only simple and what the Honorable Prime Minister's goal is let's take it further and say, can we do in a sense uh, as citizens, rather than complaining, start creating solutions in the sectors of agriculture, in the sectors of water, in the sectors of normal animal husbandry, in the sectors of health, in the sectors of textile and crafts. These are innovations that needs to be done by, by all of us uh, in one way. Simple, for example, I tell you the example of a blacksmith blower. We have not innovated, nor are we encouraging our kids. And as if we are serious about it, I mean, I'll tell you, uh, Sarah, ma'am, that one of the biggest challenges I face in Selco is when youngsters join is that the parents have an objection when they join Selco. It's like, oh, it's a social organization. Salaries are not high. Will they get married? The cousin is earning more in Infosys or Wipro. You know why, Sarah, ma'am? We always want Gandhi to be born in neighbor's house and not our own house. So the simplest thing I can tell to every individual is, can you let your kids do something, study something that will be beneficial for the society rather than just creating these benchmarks about he or she should get 96, he or she should get 98. Forget the, the problems of the world, the problems of the country is not yours. You do your marks. I need you to come first in class. I think first change is where am I making my next generation and next generation starts from your house, ready for this country and the world so that he or she is ready to make that difference rather than blindly going after jobs and saying that I'm going to earn money. You're going to wear that, that until like, for example, coming back to the same why I started that is a blacksmith blower. Nobody wants to work on a blacksmith blower's innovation is because that's not good enough to be written in a resume 
of how did the blacksmith blowers could be actually made more efficient so that less coal is used he or she is working under less heat stress leading to more incomes leading to him and her his family to get out of poverty no students are working on it because it's not good enough to be written in resume but every app that has a life shelf of less than 6 months is exciting and where the parents push for i think if you look at a country like india there are numerous problems from blacksmith from kanyakumari to gujarat that means there are numerous you know uh, opportunities to be an innovative nation that actually brings innovation that couples innovations with poverty reduction climate change sustainable society in the exact form of LIFE that the Prime Minister had that agenda for, for, for the goodwill or, or, or actually moving the country forward, and more so that this country becomes a representation of making the poor get out of poverty in a sustainable manner and becomes an R&D center for rest of the world. What we do in Manipur or Meghalaya is actually absolutely replicable in Tanzania and Mizoram in Tanzania and Brazil. What we do in Mizoram is absolutely replicable in South Africa. That's the beauty of having a country like diversity of problems. That means a diversity of solutions. If Bangalore today has the second most heat stress in terms of water after Cape Town, how many of our individual thought process, how do we make it water resilient by 2030? It's not only to the government. My question is, government will ask us, give us what are the innovations that have we done that could be replicated in Jainagar, Jepinagar, Malleshwaram, etc. How do we come up with those? And those are innovations that are right in our hands. If we are, we are the climate change is just beyond the whole, the whole romanticism of recycling and planting trees. We got to be more serious than that. And each and and every and lot of the excuses that I hear is like, oh, it's beyond my capacity. I'm sorry, it's not beyond your capacity. In your day-to-day -day life, if you are a manager of an, a company X, or you're actually in a business of company of of a, of a wise, everywhere there is a value of actually creating solutions that are sustainable for today's world, that is beneficial for your kid to live in a world that has less heat stress and less problem for your own child in every work that you do saying that no it's not innovation whether i am working in lnt as a heat can i come up with the most efficient turbine or can i am i working with a team that can actually bring in efficiency i'm actually working in suppose in infosys can i make better buildings can i write a better code for design of buildings per se when i come back home can I ask my kid, what else did you teach physics? Or oh, you learned physics, your homework is on physics. Can, how can you apply that physics for some sort of water conservation that you can, why don't you challenge your children? Why don't you challenge your colleagues? Why don't you challenge your bosses? That how do we bring in sustainability so that the company, your house, all your your society per se your panchayat becomes sustainable which leads to a cumulative that which cumulatively becomes sustainable for a country like ours so i think i think the responsibility so there are very simple ways of looking at an ecosystem approach just a simple thing like a, a dairy value chain let me talk of a dairy value chain you know as the heat stresses are increasing the production of milk from the cows are decreasing because there's a stress on the cow. So now let us relook at what is a dairy value chain. There's a shortage of in terms of fodder. Then you have the cow shed itself. Then you have the milking of the cow. Then you have the storage of the milk. And then you have a koya making machine. Now you can come up with simple ways of hydroponics to grow your own fodder for the number of cows that you have. Number one, redesign the cattle shed. We have old, old ways of doing it in our own countries where people in Rajasthan were living in the most coolest places. Let's replicate those designs today for cooler cow sheds, redesign a cow shed. 
use solar water pumps for cleaning the cow sheds, use solar powered milking machines for milking the cows. You have solar powered milk chillers for storing the milk. And then you have solar powered milking, sorry, the koya making machine. The whole supply chain is sustainable, making the livelihood of the farmer, dairy farmer, not, on, not only sustainable, but increasing the productivity, leading to increased incomes. You need innovation in hydroponics. You need innovations in, in water pumps. You need innovations in milking machines. All these are exciting challenges for students, whether it's from IIC or from IITs or, or from uh, or ITIs. It's a brilliant way of looking at a problem statement. Similarly, in the rice value chain, what does a one and a half acre farmer needs is right from seeding, transplanting, threshing, drying, processing, flower making, where can we actually create? And everything that you do, a Pani Puri vendor, how do we make her house resilient enough so she's doing Pani Puri in a very cold environment? Because if you, if you go to the kitchens of the poorest, it's the hottest place. It's a lifespan. It's the lung of a woman. If I do an X-ray of a poor woman, it would be as much as she's, she's taking two packets of cigarette on a daily basis because that's what the smoke she inhales on a simple redesigning of the households would lead to a cooler working place, better design of the Pani Puri making machine efficient, making our cart making more efficient. We've all seen vending carts. Have you seen a Pani Puri vendor going down a hill? What you will see is like she's trying to save the cart and she's trying to stay, save the stove from bringing. We have done brilliant innovations but we have not been able to innovate a simple cart for a lady in Bangalore to be able to take a Pani Puri in a proper manner. What are we as a society doing? So we, these are simple innovations right from water resources to agriculture that we all should actually be responsible for. In And all this I'm saying is, it's not day to day. Yes, people think about composting, those are class one and class two and class two and class three. We are much beyond that. If we really want to look at, as people are predicting that, I don't know in the newspapers, if you have read it today, we're going to be have one of the hottest summers and it will continue to happen year by year. But this has to be a drastic change in thinking processes where institutes like IIC have to change their coursework and so that we have students sustainability students ready by 2025 26 we need thousands of them into the mainstream because this thinking of sustainability has to become now mainstream it cannot be a fluffy thing that it's a after after sales project or a after school project that actually we do and sometimes i'm so i'm urging the citizens of this country that what the honorable prime minister has done his life is as big or bigger in many ways, as big as the independence movement of 1947, because it's threatening the lives of numerous 600 million people in our country of poor. So innovations are needed in rice value chain, where waters are going in. How do you bring in millet value chain? How do you bring dairy value chain? How do you bring in poultry value chains in terms of, in terms of textile and crafts? How many millions are going to lose their businesses? And, and because of the heat stress, as well as the er erratic rainfall that we're all going through, while there's gloom and doom on one side, but there's immense hope because a country like India has the capability to provide solutions in the next three to five years. It is in our doorstep, the solutions. We have one of some of the best engineering faculty and students in the world. We have the best managers in the country. We have innovative thinkers in the country. We need to put that in place and create the solutions that they can get implemented tomorrow. We have institutions like NABAD. Look at the maternal and labor room. How can we redesign an autoclave? How can we redesign the, the bed in which the, the lady delivers the baby? How can we redesign the... If you go to some of the public health centers, it looks like a the worst area to have the most painful experience. Can't we design it from a climate resilient perspective? We have people designing exotic buildings 
and all of us work in those companies why can't we change that you're designing exotic buildings can you redesign a maternal labor room where 1.5 billion children are born every 20 years in a country like india why couldn't we do that that's in our daily lives those are influences that each one of us have the capability to change and i think somewhere we are stuck somewhere we are super stuck it's not my job or somewhere we are stuck i cannot do it i'm sorry that's an excuse that's a lame excuse no longer i am willing to hear it at all like i hear excuses from oh yeah we can't do it we can i'm sorry each one of us can do it that we don't have the willing power to do it then you have no right to complain about it because you have to send your kids we have no choice you have to send your kids to become the sustainable champions of tomorrow you yourself has to take much more steps that you're spending time and saying where can i actually contribute right from whether i'm a doctor whether i'm an engineer whether i'm a chartered accountant whether i'm an architect whether i am a maid servant or whether i am a i'm a mason each one of that has an actually capability of creating solutions that are actually viable of a larger level which will lead to us because we don't have time we are looking at a 2030 of a 1.5 degree centigrade that is 7 years away and 7 years away if i go back you all remember 2016 very clearly and how time has passed from 2016 to 2023 same thing 2023 to 2030 will pass as was and so we need to be quick in our action on a daily basis to create those innovations and how do we look at so so on a day, it's it's a, so any field that you are working in you are working in break it up into 5 6 7 8 parts where do you think there is an energy consumption where do you think that unsustainability is creeping in create a systemic thinking and and create that blo- the chain of that system and each point see where can energy actually can make a difference whether it's a company whether it's a school whether you have a private business start making that change in one of the value chains one and showcases that are success so that others can actually replicate this is what i did in dairy value chain this i did it in my business that i completely green channel of a b c d e f g or i was working in this department of this company and 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 i brought in suggestions which led to less carbon intensity or i'm actually teaching a course in iisc i brought in the concept of sustainability into all teachings that i do so i become institutionalized into every student who graduates from my class we have a larger role to play so that the kids don't blame us tomorrow that what type of earth did we leave behind for them how do we now we force the kids to learn football tabla bharatnatyam why can't we actually make sustainability as part of it why does it have to become in a so called education because it's a prime survival for us in in many ways so so i think the solutions are there simple innovative as long as we are putting our thought process into it to, to typically example in silk weaving in in uh, in say meghalaya uh, or so turmeric grinder uh, meghalaya has one of the best gene pool of tumor turmeric haldi and what we basically did was we basically looked at the end to end process of haldi making right from from uh, picking uh, to cleaning to slicing to peeling to threshing to making it a powder to packaging and these are 50 60 women say in in west garo hills the 60 women who actually built a small um, in a in a 80 by 80 place they build a shed completely sustainable made of um, uh, made of sustainable uh, this one uh, composites with good day lighting um, good aeration solar powered slicers solar powered washers solar powered dryers solar powered packaging and they actually sell those turmeric in shillong and in guwahati and some of it is also actually exported in many ways when the poor of this country are taking a lead in making it happen why can't we actually do that same thing with pineapple processing in 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 east same thing like iri silk in 
in Meghalaya as well as, as, as in Manipur. Same innovations, similar innovations have actually happened in, in uh, hammer making uh, in blacksmith blower in Udupi. The redesign. A redesign of um, uh, hammer mills by by blacksmith blowers in Udupi and in, uh, in, uh, in 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 Karnataka, for example, right? And in for example, if I if if I take the space of uh, uh, Raichur, and and in Manipur, this year, hundred percent of the public health centers in Manipur and Meghale will be solar powered with solar powered autoclaves and solar powered. This is something. Somebody said it would take 2030, but we got together and said, we don't have time till 2030. 10 of us got together and said, let us, along with the government of Meghalaya, our challenge was, we started in 2022, uh, sorry, 2021, can we complete by 2022? Because we don't have time, nor the poor has time. Thanks to the government, as well as we were able to raise resources that 100% of Meghalaya and Manipur will be 100% solar in the public health center by this year end. So we all have the power to do that. But what we are running short is time. But we can also win over time if all of us actually uh, got together. Sarah, ma'am, see, this, the question is, when you asked uh, what is day to day, I think we have to go beyond day to day. And uh, and the day to day today is, uh, is, is in each one, whether we are a teacher and we are a chartered accountant, uh, a business modeling, a business planning, we need to bring in sustainability into our thought process. Even when a chartered accountant is making a business plan, he or she will have to bring in saying that, is this business viable from an environmental perspective? Forget the financial perspective. Is it viable from a financial, from an environment perspective? Is, is, if it's unviable in many ways, then you and me are not going to suffer. It's going to be a, uh, the point that the our next generation will actually suffer. So there are numerous such examples. And if people are thinking, okay, saying that we do not have enough examples, just write to me and uh, we definitely can come up where. And what, what I'm pleading from all of you is that let's not do simple uh, and, and, and showcase the prime minister's goal of LIFE to a much larger level that we as a country show a leadership by 2026, where Mozambique, South Africa, Germany, US can look towards India and say, can I take these solutions back to my own country? And slowly we become that centerpiece of solutions for the world to replicate, leading to a very, very holistic and sustainable world. So I'm I leave it to questions right now rather than um, so if that's uh, that would be a better way of actually talking and so if that's okay. Yes, sir. That's absolutely fine for us. So now I request uh, audience to share their views or the questions if you have anything. So I request everyone uh, to please raise your uh, hand so that I will call one by one. Okay, now we have the question from uh, Nalmaya. So can you unmute yourself and speak, Nalmaya? Nalmaya, you have any question? After Nalmaya, Vaibhav can uh, share the question. Sir, I do have no question, sir. Okay, okay, then uh, so sir, if you have I also questions, have no question. Please raise your hand so that we will be able to call your names. So, any question from the participants? I think if there are a lot of okay, the age group uh, is there, I would I would request you to um, write to me and uh, uh, we could actually work together on a project for this year. And then by 24, you can showcase to your parents that 
how um, complex, irrespective of how complex the problems of climate is, how complex the situation priority, you each one of you has a has a solution that can be actually uh, solved in many ways. So to realize our kids. So the question is um, to to my younger colleagues here on the on the seminar is that is um, e each one of you uh, should when you're doing your homework, when you're doing your project, think about every piece that you do. Ask yourself, is it going to harm the environment? What are the other, other ways of doing the same project, for example? Or if you're coming back by an auto rickshaw from somewhere, okay, you can, you can come and say, what are, if I came from Jainagar to JP Nagar, what are the different ways that I could have come to Jainagar from JP Nagar? What are the different ways of transportation that I could have done that could have used less petrol, less. Or if I'm actually doing a homework on, uh, on physics, for example, think of an example, if I'm doing a physics, where else can I use that formula of say, and, and where is, ask your parents, where can I use the formula on a daily basis? And, and can I think of the environment while I'm deciding on a problem? Or if you're actually driving on a road, question yourself, can the road be made more environmental? Or the car that you're driving is, is in, or the auto rickshaw you're driving, yeah. or the very cloth that you're wearing, is it environmental? Start questioning at the age that you're in and get those solutions. You Some solutions might not be there and you say, while I grow up, let me work on it as a solution, the, the dress I'm wearing, the way I'm doing, I said, uh, some solutions might not come today, might come 10, 10, 15 years down the line. Some might be later on. So, but everything has a solution that is environmentally friendly. Yeah, yeah thank you so much, sir. There is a one question from uh, Pr uh, Pranjal. How are you saving the environment by collecting the plastic and recycling it, or by planting the trees, or by technology saving the environment? See, the question is, the fundamental question um, we should ask is, it's not about how do I recycle the uh, uh, plastic. The first question as youngster I would ask is, uh, can I, can I, in the future, in two years down the line, what could be a replacement for plastic? And that's the question we should ask is the it's not about recycling a plastic. We know plastic is harmful. We know that plastic takes 10, uh, it takes thousands of years to work. We need to like cement, for example, what is it's not about how do I make cement industry more efficient? We would say, how can I actually come up with alternating building materials to cement like bamboo? Can I use bamboo? Those are the questions that should should arise in your head how okay somebody will do the plastic recycling make it into different types of what you call it as whether it's a raincoat whether it's clothes whether it's anything else whether it's i build a new house using recycled plastic but the fundamental problem is can i replace plastic and and many of you uh, many of you should come up with solutions in the future what is plastic used for? It's used for carrying something. It, you have bags. It's been used in tires. It's been used in in your in your cars, etc. Okay, is there any other material that I can actually use it? And that's the question that you should be asking yourself. Yes, oh, some you. of the plastic is used in hospital. Absolutely, but. While it has been used, we cannot get away from not using, right? So I'm glad. Is so what is it? So windmills are killing birds, and how can we save them by solution for it? And I have researched a lot about it. Thank you, Bhavna, for that question. It's uh, the the anecdotal. Yes, it has a lot of times the way we install windmills are on wrong. There are just like as you have roads. Birds also have their highways. 
it's not about just going and blindly putting wind on the pathway of the birds. And there are, there are scientific ways of where these windmills can be put, which actually does not go into the harm's way. And secondly, it's very easy. For example, you can create, you can, each of the windmills can have a certain frequency, which actually wants the bird not to come in its direction in many ways. These are very simple things that you can actually install in the windmills. First is look at what are the pathways of the words. Second, is there a, is it like when you want to scare off somebody saying that without harming that somebody, you put a small alarm system that you don't want to kill it, you don't want to harm it, but you want to warn, just like the lighthouse used to warn the ships from rather than hitting the rocks, same way you have the harm, you can put in alarms in these windmills to make sure that these birds don't. So is there any questions? If you have any question, please raise your hand so that I uh, I will announce your name so you can ask the questions. Students, you have any questions? Our participants, you have any questions? Yes. Yes, Nalmaya, you are saying something. There is a question in the chat box. When road is being constructed, the trees around the place are uprooted so that it does not cause an accident. Here, if the environment is not destroyed by the human life is harmed, can this be stopped in any way? Yes, yeah, see, see, a lot of them. First is num there are two problem statements that you have mentioned in your in your statement, Pramat. One is why does the trees get uprooted because we have we have created so much of water or we have not created proper proper pathways and made the loose soil so loose that the tree is going to get uprooted right that's our issue that we have made the soil very weak we need to make sure that the soil is very strong we we are responsible for that accident it's not the tree was not responsible for a problem that we created we are actually blaming the tree and so we are cutting the tree off number one number two is that there are some cases we we'll, we have no choice because but second is the issue pramat is the issue is not about the road think about transportation like why are the roads built so that people can go from a to b the problem statement is what are the different ways that a person can go from a to b have we looked at all ways for people to or suddenly went and built the road up. Sometimes we take the easiest route of building the road because that's what the people want and I cut the trees, right? Because you wanted the road. No, as, 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 children, as youngsters, I would ask you always question, not the tree versus the road, was the transportation required? What is the best way? Could we have held a metro? Could we have a different road where least amount of environmental damage is done? Why are the road? What is mass transportation? Can it actually help? Those are the questions. But the tree falling in many parts of Bangalore is because we have been responsible for loosening the soil. So we need to say, how do we tighten the soil? How do you make sure that the trees don't get uprooted? Because we are, we are insanely building buildings around it, making, this, making the, the, the tree not able to hold on to the roots very well to the soil and that's very very critical sir i understood it but what about windmills already there in the paths that is where i would say uh, i'm glad you asked this question where already in the paths is where i would put the alarms where i would actually put the alarms go and put the alarms right now if there are like for example you already have a house which you shouldn't have built but you're saying that a lot of uh, uh, thieves are coming in. What do you do? You actually put an alarm, right? So, so you cannot remove the house and say, I'm going to remove this house and go somewhere else and stay because there are too many thieves here. What I will put is an alarm system. So existing windmills, I'll actually go and put a warning frequency, which actually warns the bird not to fly on this. 
what was the main reason that is killing our environment in many ways because of the chemical release well, no no hostile ways in, 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 inevitable how can we reduce minis we may see the thing is that i'm not sure if anything is inevitable because 100 years ago a lot of the waste didn't exist and and there are ways that we could recycle reuse in a manner that is environmentally friendly so so every that's exactly if research has not been done let's put in money to do that research so so nothing is inevitable is i mean inevitable is because we are making it inevitable which is wrong because we have lived without it before in many ways so so that's that's something that i would what is the main reason that is killing us in many ways because of the chemicals released from factories exactly and what absolutely i want you guys want you all to come up whoever is working takes chemical as future as 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 urban planning is for example, how do we make factories environmentally sustainable that each smoke that actually comes out can i capture it can i capture it and make sure that all the harmful elements that are there with every smoke actually does not go into the environment those technologies exist is we need to implement it and it's because your life is dependent for the future and your kids life in the future if we start thinking i'm glad you are asking these questions and you should be asking us your parents your teachers no i'm not satisfied with this answer but what are you doing in your own company you should be asking your parents where your mother works your father works what are you doing because this is something that you are leaving us behind in 20 years i will be part of the earth you will be part of our decision making right sir how can we stop pollution the factory spits yes i mean in a sense why is that factory in the first place it is to produce a, a certain item can we make sure that that item is produced in the least harmful manner rather than making more money can it actually be made in the that is what i'm asking you to look at all the steps is it it's not all factories many factories around the world are environmentally sustainable look at the godrej factory in mumbai it's completely uh do you think cars should be banned from city centers i don't see that's again a my question is i would increase taxes on cars which will actually earn me money to make the public transportation more efficient so for example in europe and in us whether you are a managing director of a company or whether you are a road repairer everybody uses public transport why hasn't in our country that because i become rich i go in a car why do you think that shouldn't i be i mean i should be rewarded for taking a public transportation i should be looked up but today oh it's prestige that i have a car in many of my european friends actually don't have a car and do you know what my young my young colleagues they don't like people who own cars they think owning a car that means you're destroying the environment for me so when people show off and say i bought a mercedes i want a tesla i want whatever i would look at it was great but for whom right how do we increase the bicycle paths how do we actually increase short distances should be by create public transportation how can we make our bus services super efficient super well designed that all of us actually safely go into the buses that's what it's called urban yes we can do cng but we still are not going to the main problem is transportation it's not what type of fuel it's a transportation system that we need to look at what is the main reason for global warming humans humans are the main reason for global warming we are we are the people who create factories we are the people who actually transport if you know that in the america 28% of the pollu of the global warming is because of transportation and these are things we can solve it by much better public transportation system where i i'm, I'm so glad i mean i should have realized that all of you youngsters are there i thought your parents were there so youngsters should, should challenge can i use the public transportation or i want my rights as a public transportation to happen 
which will actually reduce. Or if I can walk, I walk. The, the prestige should be in the, the, in, the, we should not feel proud that somebody owns a car. We should not feel proud that, no, it is not. Or a fancy building with glasses where you trap it, no. We all should be simplistic and that's when the earth will be able to hold itself. Can we use solar vehicles? Yes, we can use vehicles that use solar power. Yes, we can in many ways. But the issue is, again, I ask, is the transportation is how can we actually look at uh, transportation? There are solar vehicles, there are solar buses, there are solar, but I would still go back to the type of transportation. What are the reasons of global and then how can we develop our country? The main two primary issues. We, yes, we are polluting. Number two is we have to solve poverty because poverty is the greatest polluter in many ways. We need to solve poverty. And all of you young students, a poor kid in Hubli or a slums in, in Bangalore is no difference than to you or me. That kid has equal chance to get into IIT or an equal chance to get into IIC. Then why can't he or she study with me? Just because her mother works in the maidservant, so what? She has an equal opportunity for the development of this country. And, and once she develops, she becomes sustainable and, and, and our country flourishes in many ways. And that is where I think we should, we should uh, um, do that. And Tejas, yes, uh, there are energy um, appliances. You're right, efficiency is the first thing, whether you talk about uh, efficiency of washing machines, efficiency of car uh, car uh, cars, efficiency of motors, we need to bring in efficiency and penalize inefficient fans and tax them more. Why should I buy a cheap fan which is inefficient? And we buy it because I'm going to save money. No, you don't save money. You actually spend more over a period of 10 years by buying an inefficient fan. So, what so is why do I want to, why why I want to share? Uh, uh, sir, how sun has more gravitation and are there any, there are, I think that's beyond this, but there is, a, it's a more of an astronomy question, right? it is, it is, there are so many um, uh, so, uh, equivalent to our solar system, there are numerous that uh, have the ability to do what we are actually doing. So combustion of fossil is the major cause of error. Can you say how, sir? Pollution is when you bear, burn anything, right? The carbon and fossil fuels, it releases carbon, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which actually leads to the, um, the, the coalition with oxygen that leads to what we are unable to, because we need oxygen to breathe. And moment more and more other effluents are mixed, we are breathing that. I mean, if you think about it, let's look at a poor man's house where in the kitchen, it's equivalent to actually smoking two, two packets of cigarettes on, on a daily basis. Do you think GMO should be banned? See, the question is, I, I'm not for GMO. I'm not for GMO at all. But the question is, I don't want anything to be banned. What I want to know is, can we, before it get banned, why should it not be rejected by the people itself? Because I'm getting a better produce. The authentic is like, how do I increase the nutrients in the soil to grow brinjols that I don't have to depend on GMOs, right? Otherwise, we'll keep banning. My question is, we need to get back to sustainable practices and show that sustainable practices. And you are the future who can actually do that. Without banning, they will lose out. The others will lose out. And that is what we need to um, do that. If we don't create factories, yeah, we, um, I didn't say that we shouldn't create factories. We should create factories. But how do we make it sustain? And there are all many, like Godrej, where you, you must have seen a washing machine of a Godrej or a, or a drying machine of a Godrej. It's a very sustainable. They recycle the water. They recycle the building. They recycle the effluents they do. They recycle the metal they, they get. It's 100% end-to-end and uh, uh, recyclable, yes. Do electric cars create pollution and harm the environment? Yes, one way or the other. Because it's, it's, it's where, where are you, uh, uh, where are you, where are you charging it? If you're charging at home, that means your electricity is using the same fossil fuels to charge your car. So you might not be using petrol, but you are using a coal-fired plant. So again, I 
it's an issue of transportation and where does your source come from so we and then recycling of the batteries itself so let's not took everything okay it's i have an ev vehicle that means i'm environmentally friendly no there are questions about that i'm glad somebody actually asked that question in many ways so many people practice as a religious statement but it causes both water and air pollution is this correct so this question is also it's a land usage right every obviously this is a religious way everybody has and some all all ways are acceptable one is composting with the earth one is making sure that uh, you don't use land space for what is so it's both both are pluses and minus can we use solar power to charge electric vehicles absolutely you can instead of creating petrol stations you can get solar powered stations and all the batteries are getting charged you drive in rather than waiting for it to get charged the petrol pump guy takes your battery out and actually uh uh actually put a put a replacement of that uh, battery and within 5 minutes you can actually get out and that battery would have been uh charged by solar okay so thank thank you so much you have taken uh, very very much pleasure to answer the question as well as pleasure i can say <laughs> no no initially I, i got it wrong i i was i i think a larger audience i'm glad when when i saw the kids that i had to change no no actually sir it is a combination of both we have the uh, researchers uh, as well as the kids so sure, sure. Ar- around we have uh, 100 participants so 45 okay. 45 to uh, 50 percent uh, students and the rest of them are adults adults so, okay okay, so, okay. Yes, yes so it's a combination of both so okay. i think i think people are benefited by your uh, thoughtful oh, no, thank insights. you for inviting sir and please please uh, share my share my email address and anybody has questions or wants to do any innovative projects please please write to me and then we can actually work sure, together sure, sir. Yeah, uh, sir, now now i request uh, dr anandi subramanian uh, who is uh, heading uh, soaring sparrow foundation so uh, i wanted uh, madam to share her views regarding this live program Over to you, Anandi, madam. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, uh, Mr. Hari Shande. It was an illuminating yeah. talk. Uh, and uh, actually, whatever you said, I mean, it is like uh, uh, the innovation side, which is, I think, it it would really inspire students to work. I think you've invited them to work with you on projects as well. So that's a big inspiration for them. Yes. Uh, what i wanted to know is like you know like uh, the stress is on systemic approach i think that is very critical that we look at it as a you know the wholesomeness of it and uh, we look at the entire uh, value chain of um, various uh, uh, whatever the uh, the production system we are looking at or any uh, supply system we are looking at uh, what we are working because i am now a consultant to the unep working on uh, you know the mission life so uh, the whole idea which uh, we are working on is uh, uh, the behavioral aspect you know the individual behavioral change uh, nudging people to change their behaviors uh, uh, to uh, towards uh, you know adopting a more sustainable way of life now as you know uh, that is very difficult because people it's quite difficult to yes. um, uh, change their mindset and patterns of behavior which maybe due to you know various uh, habits which have formed over the years or the peer pressure you know of like you said of owning a car because somebody else so and so owns a car in your neighborhood and you need to have that status symbol or something like that so these kind of things is what we are working on you know so that that is so we are, we are looking at behavioral change models and all that just to see how what kind of model we can approach uh, or use for different types of um, you know in sectors we are focusing on certain sectors for instance yes uh, like you mentioned the transport is a sector energy efficiency and then water and all these are sectors and this is where it is uh, we have to come up with uh, protocols and you know monitoring mechanism and stuff uh, to uh, ensure that you know uh, not i would not ensure to uh, it it is um, a mechanism which we can probably test at the ground level uh, at a later stage uh, just to see if our model is going to work whether we can actually influence people to you know to uh, change their behaviors like using cycles for instance 
and there are a lot of uh, uh, institutional changes which are required like you need cycle lanes and all that at the same time you need people to be inclined to use cycles so uh, that is where uh, like we are coming from and uh, that we would like to understand your um, you know uh, um, uh, have some kind of uh, input from you as to how whether you, you must have faced all these challenges because you have done many projects across in different sectors so how did you kind of uh, you know uh, tackle these kind of issues of uh, you know nudging people to change their behavior see the question is it's an uh, where does somebody's incentive lie ma'am is a question right so there are examples if i look at amsterdam which has become a, a city of bicycles right now if we, if you if you wear if you don't wear a helmet even a 3 year old kid laughs at you said that you're not wearing a helmet it's not cool to not wear a helmet right how did that systemic change happen it was a laws which started with strictly like to own a car in amsterdam is hugely taxed hugely taxed right so that forced people to go into bicycles and now it has become the norm right somewhere it is like ma'am why do we wear helmets in india it's not because we're going to get killed it's because the police will catch us right why do we wear seat belts yeah how did the behavior of seat belts come in it's not because again we we're going to get killed it's because the police will catch us somewhere we'll have to see where the incentives are so that's why the younger generation is very clear that for the younger generation how can the educational institutions need to change the way they teach and make it not a grading system that everything is related to grade but how do you bring in sustainability into every thing that they teach on and suddenly you have a champion students in 5 years see this plan is a 15 to 20 year thought process that we need to look at a system change there is okay if i am if i am getting 15 years and i have a 20 if i have a 2040 strategy that is 17 years i have a 20 strategy that this is my thought change for the people who will turn 18 in 2040 this is my change for the people who will turn 22 in 2030 80 all my change what will happen to people who change tomorrow to 20 so i okay my maximum population is here i'm very positive by 2040 i'm able to change because i have institutionalized the thought process from day one right the others is incentive that's why some countries have the tax issues like for example denmark has said has said that anybody uh, anybody uh, beyond a, a, who's born after 2009 will not be able to buy cigarettes ever that means in 60 years cigarettes will be completely banned in denmark because then it's it's 2009 that person would be 60 whatever right we need to have a long term strategy with small small deliverables of those long long term term strategies and that's where see otherwise the behavioral change will not happen so easily as we think because it's a societal as you said societal pressure if i was in bangalore and if i'm the mayor of bangalore i will see the thing that i am riding a bicycle and i am taking 2 feet space while a humongous car is taking 8 feet by 8 feet but we pay both pay the same taxes that's insane that's not inclusive and why can't we tax the larger vehicle you have the more expensive like for example in in iceland you the speeding limit fine is directly proportional to your salary it's not like okay i'm going to fine you 50 dollars for crossing the limit no it's 1% of your salary so so it pinches everybody and these are which initially needs to start with a stick and that stick then becomes institutionalized and then it becomes a human behavior in many ways in in we can have more say for example simple thing ma'am we have the ro roads the highways were created with a lane system right why are we not able to follow the lane system we can't blame the government here it's our fundamental belief as two thing tanzania is a much poorer country than us man much much poorer you know man i went to rural tanzania in the poorest part of tanzania i went to and on the highway 
there were six kids that were standing on the other side of highway there were four trucks that came and stopped on the highway to make sure that the six kids cross the road to the school across in a much poorer country than ours go to sri lanka there is no horn somewhere we need to come up with a different sort of pressure for a country like ours like i'm not comparing it to the us europe i'm comparing it to tanzania and sri lanka and how did they institutionalize that i need to respect the kids who are crossing the road major trucks stopped and the kids actually crossed we need to in some cases we need to have a stick it's not about just moral science and civics that we are taught in class it's not going to happen that way i for the for the younger generation i'll start early i have 12 years 13 years i'll go institutionalize that in every course that i teach this is how it is this is how the behavior i will do role plays in class how do you behave in a bus how do you behave in an airplane that as soon as the plane comes in and we all get up as if our luggage is going to be stolen by somebody else right we need to teach that in kids the role play how do you behave how do you stand in a line how do you actually don't cut these are things that we need to change our education system which is grade based rather than society based and that is what i would categorize the generation into multiple and what are the incentive for each generation to change and transportation i will tax just like how london taxed and that led to people forcing the people to take the public transportation yeah right uh, i think yeah what you are saying is more systemic uh, changes which is uh, required and uh, uh, while we are looking at other kind of um, uh, aspects which will go together with whatever you are saying Absolutely. and we are looking into that also mm -hmm. and uh, apart from all these uh, things we are also looking at traditional knowledge systems because we have a right, huge right. database in that and uh, we have a lot to learn from whatever was there with us you know with our culture and with the way we have lived uh, we have been uh, as a nation as a culture we have been uh, very uh, in, in sync with uh, nature and we know how to live with that so i think we have to adopt all those things which is what we are also working on but i think uh, yes uh, you've uh, you know kind of uh, harped on many uh, aspects of life but there also ma'am there, there also there also there also ma'am when the in the in the in the, in the cultural thing that we have no unfortunately when we when we teach to the kids you know the way say that in kannada no hale ava namma namma tande avaru maartidru the way we start doing it we bring in a negative thought in the kid oh it's an old theory why is my father why is my grandfather we don't make it exciting saying that it is relevant for tomorrow just because yoga went to the western world and came back as exercise and relevant to the generation we have actually said oh yoga is modern right but everything is like we we should brand and create that that systemic change that we've done for years as relevant for today rather than saying that oh it's a tradition that we need to save see we should stop using the word save we should stop using the word can i get it back no this is what it is good and this is good for you because the children what i see the children at no no this is what our ancestors used to do see how proud you should be that turns off a lot of the students and no, say, i agree with you that's not that's, that's not what we are doing no no what uh, you what actually, you i'm what, just telling my i no, my in the father, sense I, I, yeah i tell my parents no, i said i, I think yeah no kids. yeah yeah that is there uh, but the uh, the thing is how we can sometimes whatever was traditionally uh, the system was there it cannot be actually adopted as it is it needs to be adapted to suit our conditions exactly so all those things are very important but i think uh, i'll just uh, stop here and I'll thank you for your very illuminating thank you, talk thank and maybe so we can we can have more discussions Please. in the future on this yeah thank you Absolutely. so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you sir. thanks a lot uh, madam uh, uh, i think uh, uh, it's time to say thanks again to dr harish so uh if if there are any further questions i am going to share the harisar's email id so you can uh, post your uh, you can straight away write you, your mail to dr harish so i request all the students to subscribe to our youtube channel the youtube channel link has been already shared in the chat box you can uh, 
subscribe to our channel so that uh, you will get the notification so we are conducting the series of webinars under the live theme so uh, uh, you can subscribe to our channel so that you will get notification in further so with this uh, i thank everyone for active participation so uh, though there are so many questions considering the time limit i am unable to i am unable to take all the questions so you can straight away write to dr harish so uh, with this uh, i thank everyone for active participation uh, thank you so much sir thanks bharat thanks